Welcome to the Tarantula Collective. My name is Richard, and if you enjoy species-specific care and husbandry videos like this, then make sure you hit that like button, and don't forget to subscribe and click that notification bell to turn on all notifications so you're alerted every time I upload a new video in the future. This week we'll be discussing a species that's kind of rare in the hobby. It is a gorgeous tarantula, though it is a little on the small side. But don't let the fact that it's a dwarf turn you off, because this species is mind-blowing. Thilly diamantinensis, or the Brazilian blue dwarf beauty, is sometimes described as a dwarf green bottle blue. It may be smaller than the GBB, but it makes up for the lack of size with much brighter and more vibrant colors. Originally, the species was described as Alagoxystrae diamantinensis in 2009 and was introduced into the hobby in 2012. Being fairly new, there isn't a whole lot of information available online in regards to this particular species. This tarantula is endemic to the rocky savannas of southeast Brazil. Though a lot of Brazilian species prefer a more humid environment, being from the rainforests, this particular species is not as reliant on high humidity as was once thought. Though a lot of the first care sheets recommended damp substrate and higher humidity levels, over time and with the experience of many tarantula keepers, it has been discovered that you can keep them as adults fairly similar to the GBB, and they will have no issues as long as you keep a water dish in the enclosure and keep it full. These are prolific webbers and will fill any enclosure with an elaborate maze of tunnels so it is beneficial to include plants, cork bark, and other decorations that are vertical inside the enclosure for them to use as anchor points for their webbing. Being a dwarf species, they start off very tiny as spiderlings, usually being sold around one-eighth of an inch, but they do grow very fast. Most males mature within a year or so, and females mature shortly after that, so they will be full size within 12 to 18 months, making them very fast growers. These tarantulas are also very quick, especially as spiderlings, and will bolt so quickly they almost seem to teleport. So care should be taken anytime you remove the lid from their enclosure or are doing a rehouse, as they can be a little bold and may make a run for it if they feel startled or threatened. Overall, their temperament is best described as skittish. They aren't really a defensive specimen, though they may give a threat pose when you're trying to move them during a rehouse, or they feel they have no route of escape. Under normal circumstances, they will just quickly dive into one of their many tunnels or hides and escape a perceived threat before showing any defensive behaviors. As the tarantula becomes older and larger, it becomes less and less skittish and makes a great display tee as an adult as it spends a lot of its time outside its web tunnels and has some of the most amazing colors of any tarantula out there. Another unique and amazing aspect of this species, and why it's a great tarantula to have in your collection, is that this species is one of the few New World tarantulas that does not have urticating hairs, so you don't have to worry about getting itchy after rehousing them or cleaning up their enclosure. That being said, it is not an ideal species to handle, as they are small and very fast, and could quickly bolt from your hands, and even a drop from a small distance could prove fatal. As far as their husbandry is concerned, I keep my spiderlings in a basic spiderling acrylic enclosure with more height than width. I fill the enclosure halfway with substrate and add a few slivers of cork bark or fake plants for them to use for their webbing. I include a small water dish and overflow the water dish once every week or two. If I'm not able to include a water dish, I carefully drip water on their webbing twice a week. Though many care sheets claim this species needs to be kept on damp substrate, I find partially damp substrate to be adequate for this species and have had no issues. For the smaller spiderling, I will initially house them in a dram vial with a few air holes poked into the top with a thumbtack for ventilation. Being that the species is so small as young slings and will climb all over their enclosure, it is imperative to make sure the air holes in the enclosure are not large enough for the sling to squeeze through. 
Many spiderlings of this size have escaped when keepers neglect to use an enclosure with air holes smaller than the tarantula. For juveniles, I move them into my usual acrylic juvenile enclosures, but choose ones that have more height, as opposed to the square style ones. I again fill the enclosure up halfway with substrate and provide plenty of branches, plants, or pieces of cork bark for the tarantula to use to make its web tunnels. You still want to provide enough substrate because they will burrow down a little bit as well. Make sure to provide them with a water dish and don't let it dry out. I also overflow the water dish every week or so to ensure one corner of the enclosure is slightly damp. And for adults, because they don't grow much larger than three to four inches, a two and a half to five gallon enclosure is plenty of space for them. Personally, I like to keep this species in the Zoomed Arboreal Creature Enclosure as it provides enough ground space as well as a lot of height. I fill it up about one third with substrate and provide a hide and a lot of branches and plants for this species to web. Typically, they spend a lot of time at the mouth of their web tunnels, but will also stretch out and relax in the open if I provide them with a branch or cork bark leaned at an angle. I keep a water dish in the corner of the enclosure and overfill it every other week, allowing it to dry out completely before overflowing again. This species does very well at room temperature, between 68 to 74 degrees Fahrenheit, though I do keep my slings in a spiderling nursery that is a little warmer. The Brazilian Blue Dwarf Beauty is a great eater and rarely turns down a meal. But due to the fact that they are a dwarf tarantula, they don't require as much food as larger tarantulas. I feed my spiderlings flightless fruit flies or confused flower beetles or larvae. When they start to put on a little more size, I begin to feed them pinhead crickets or roaches. If the feeders I have available are more than two thirds the size of the spiderling, I will pre-kill the feeder by smashing its head and dropping it onto their webbing. These tarantulas will scavenge feed at this size, but usually the little bit of movement of the feeder falling on their web will be enough for them to dart out and take down the prey. I typically feed my slings every three to four days and wait 48 hours after a molt before attempting to feed them again and always remove any uneaten prey within 24 hours. For juveniles, I feed them two to three small crickets every seven to 10 days based on the size of their abdomen. If the abdomen is looking small, I will feed them more crickets more often. As the abdomen begins to look more plump, I begin cutting back on the amount and frequency to keep them at a nice looking healthy size. I try not to overfeed my tarantulas because they will usually eat whatever I put in there right up until they're in pre-molt. I wait at least four to five days after a molt before attempting to feed again and make sure they appear to have hardened up so as not to stress them out or cause any harm. And for my adults, I feed them two to three medium crickets every other week based on their abdomen size. Again, I will feed more often when they look thin and cut back on the amount and frequency as they become more plump. Personally, my Brazilian Blue Dwarf seems to enjoy crickets, roaches, and mealworms with no discernible preference. Though I have had issues with the roaches or worms burrowing into the substrate and hiding before the tarantula has a chance to find them. I usually opt to feed them crickets because I know they won't burrow and hide and will eventually crawl up a branch within striking distance of the tarantula. This tarantula is by far one of the most beautiful species in the hobby, but doesn't get shown a lot of love, probably due to the fact that it is a dwarf species and it does not have the impressive size of other tarantulas. I have even overlooked adding this species to some of my own top 10 tarantula lists. Personally, I struggle getting photos and videos of this species because they can be skittish and photosensitive. They do not like the bright lights and will usually dive into hiding anytime I attempt to take photos or record a video. But when I'm just hanging out and relaxing in my tarantula room, they are usually out on display and I'm able to observe and appreciate their beauty as long as I do not disturb their enclosure. The fact that they are so brightly colored and maintain their vibrance for so long is really a major advantage to this species. Unlike the GBB and other brightly colored tarantulas that are very vibrant right after a molt and dull over time, the D Diamond Tenesis has gorgeous colors right up to their molt with very little fading. This in conjunction with the lack of urticating hairs should really move this tea to the top of everyone's must have list, even if it doesn't grow to an impressively large size. Since it can be skittish and bolt very quickly, it may not be best as your first tarantula. But after you've had a little experience and are used to rehousing and caring for a tarantula, this will be an excellent addition to your collection. They aren't always a species that is readily available for purchase. So if you find them for sale, you may want to take advantage of the opportunity while you have it.
As you can see, this is a very beautiful tarantula and you won't be disappointed if you add one to your collection. In fact, while filming this video, I fell in love with this species all over again and had to go online and order a couple more spiderlings for myself. I know, I know, I said I'm not getting any more tarantulas, but this species really is beautiful and spending that much time up close and personal with it, I really became impressed all over again with this species. Now as much trouble as I've had with this species, especially when they were younger, with them being very fast and bolty, during the entire filming of this video, this tarantula didn't bolt at all. In fact, I had some issues just trying to get it to walk around. Possibly because it was kind of in a new environment, I pulled it out of its enclosure, it was under these bright lights, there was not really anywhere for it to run and hide, and it just kind of froze up. So don't let the calm behavior that it exhibited while I was filming trick you into thinking this tarantula is not fast. If you want to find some tarantula dealers near you, just go to my website, thetarantulacollective.com and hit the resources button at the top of the page and there'll be a list of all kinds of tarantula dealers as well as vendors for all things tarantula related and some podcasts, magazines, and other YouTube channels that I highly recommend you check out. If you enjoyed this video or found it helpful, please be sure to hit that like button. It really helps support the channel. If you want to support the the channel further, just hit that join button down below any of my videos and become a member here on YouTube. I also have a Patreon community if you'd rather join me there. If you don't want to miss any future videos, make sure you're subscribed and hit that notification bell to select all notifications because I upload new videos every Tuesday and every Thursday. And if you want to stay up to date with everything that's going on here in the collective, be sure to follow me on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, Reddit, you name it. Links for everything is down below in the description. Well, it's been a lot of fun hanging out with you. Hopefully I'll see you this Thursday. I got a very cool unboxing video to share with you all. But if I don't see you then, I will see you next Tuesday. <laughs> the world is doing all.